Well, hello friends out there in YouTube land. Rob here with Chris West Entertainment, the live audio event and entertainment division of Robert Ham Photography. Today, we are going to be talking about the Taylor ES2 pickup system, how it compares to other ones. Just gonna kind of answer some questions for you. We're gonna give you, go ahead and give you a live sound test and we're gonna give you the difference between the Aventone CK1 versus the ES2 and ask you, think about the sounds that you hear during the video, to which one is which. So let's jump right into the sound test. And now I've switched. As far as what we're talking about today, a pickup is a device in an acoustic guitar, and we're talking about acoustic guitar devices, that transmits or transforms the movement of the strings in the soundboard into an electric signal that can be output by a PA system or an amp or plug into a soundboard and plug, put out through speakers or something like that. The reason that that's important is because there's lots of different ways to do it. We're actually going to only be talking about the under saddle type, which is an active type of pickup, generally speaking, as it compares to Taylor's behind the saddle type of pickup in their ES2. Uh, and that's going to be about the what makes Taylor's different in just a minute. The pickup itself has two parts in the system. There are a couple of different parts in the system to include the speakers and the board, but the part that sit inside the guitar on an active system as compared to a passive system is an active system requires a preamp and a battery. Now those preamps and batteries can be in different places. In this case, the preamp is on, uh, or the battery is in the back and the preamp right there is in the front. But in many systems, you know, like the Precis Blend by Fishman, you can have it all in there in, in one spot. It affects the weight of the guitar, but not much else. So it does that, one other important way to know, thing to note, through a use of a piezoelectric material, piezoelectric. What that means is that it takes vibrations and turns it into an electronic current. And it does that through a blend of materials. It can be minerals and rocks and things like that, or a polyalloy blend or a bimetallic blend or like two metals. The reason this is important is if you know how a, a quartz watch works or what quartz does, that quartz crystal, you hit it with a hammer and it creates an electric current that you can read. Well, that hammer strike vibration is kind of like the strings and the quartz crystal is that thing that converts that string movement, like the hammer movement, into that electric current. Now that current is small, and in the case of, like we said, the active system gets picked up by the electronics on board, amplified, and then sent to your speakers. In a passive system, that signal would need to go to a digital input box or something like that, and then your speakers to be amplified. When you take the active part out, and you have just the passive system, people say and argue whether or not the passive system is better because the passive systems supposedly don't color the sound of the guitar. The, the guitar has its more dry or neutral sound. I would say I have to agree with that from my experience 
And one of the holy grails in working with an active pickup is finding an active pickup that sounds like a natural guitar and doesn't sound electric or electronic. And I think Taylor has done a great job of that here. In fact, I like their system so much, the ES2, um, I'm going to keep it rather than installing a, a, a K-Pure or something like that. In any event, the answer to the question you might all be wondering right now, what was what, was that the first go-round in the sound test? Well, that was the Taylor ES2. And I've moved the Aventone CK1 out of the shot because that was the second go-round. You heard the Aventone, right? And could you tell a difference, right? The rest of this review, you will only hear the CK, well, excuse me, the ES2. But in, unless you were listening with headphones on, you probably didn't hear much of a difference anyway, but the Aventone may have picked up a little bit of the room tone in here because of the room that we're in, and which is one of the things that people love about acoustically miking a guitar uh, with actual mics is because of that natural sound and the vibrato and all, the, all that stuff. And, and that's nice, but I believe that the Taylor ES2 does a great job of picking up much of that aspect. So what makes the ES2 special? Let's dive right into that. I want to share with you what most people think of when they think of a Pizio electric undersaddle pickup. When people talk about pickups, lots of times they're talking about a pickup that goes underneath the saddle. So literally, strings come off, saddle comes out, pickup goes in. That is normally what you usually find a strip. That strip, well, it transmits, it, it uh, transacts or transverses the entire bridge, which means that all of the strings can pick up vibration from any one string from whatever the top is doing in a pretty significant way. One of the things people say about active undersaddle pickups like this is that they sound very quacky. You'll know it if you hear it, but it's the sound that you hear when those piezoelectric uh, crystals, that pickup, gets pressed. And when, when might it get pressed? Well, it might get pressed when you're strumming kind of rhythmically. You don't hear it. That's not the quack. You don't hear it going whack, 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 because it's not doing it. You do hear the sound of me hitting the top of my bridge, but the reason that you don't hear it is because what Taylor does is they put their pickup behind the saddle. You can see here in this picture that the pickup is actually on three little posts that go, and those posts you can see uh, have this uh, metallic strip on them, and those posts themselves stick up from underneath the guitar. And as sticking up from underneath the guitar, they have those three metallic posts have, each have a pickup element, as you can see right here. The top of the pickup elements, we're seeing from the side, but the top of the pickup elements have a hex screw adjustment. And that adjustment allows you to adjust the tension of the pickup against the course of strings on the Taylor guitar. So instead of sitting underneath where all the pressure from your string tension is going straight down onto the pickup, the pickup is actually only as tightly connected to the saddle as you actually screw in those hex screws right there. Okay, this is genius, right? Because what it allows you to do, check this out, is number one, get rid of the wah, the whack, 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 the quacky sound, because you're not pressing and, and uh, putting pressure onto the, the plate, onto the pickup when you strum with your hand on top of it. You're not compressing it, so there's no whack, whack, whack sound. By moving it behind the pickup, you're able to adjust each string individually. So you'll notice there's three pickups. That's because there's three courses of two strings that each pickup works with. Now it picks up vibrations that are outset from those, but the, the vibration pickup pattern is mostly focused on those strings in that course. So the E and the A, very strongly the D and the G very strongly, and the B and the E strongly. So that allows you to do some special things. Lots of things, lots of times people say that they don't like the pickups, the undersaddle pickups, because they can seem kind of really harsh and brash, especially in the treble string. Not today, not today at all. It doesn't sound harsh or brash at all. It sounds pretty good, and the reason is quite simple. It's because I'm able to adjust how sour or how strong or how sensitive 
each of these set of strings, each of these courses, get simply by adjusting that hex key head screw right there. So in doing so, I'm able to adjust the way I like to do my adjustment is I like least sensitive here, so looser, not that it's falling out by any means, but I don't tighten down the pickup element so tightly to my uh, B and my E string. Middle tension here, and then lower, or excuse me, highest tension here. High, middle, low. And the reason that I do that is it allows me to get some more bass. And then it allows the middle strings to stay kind of in the middle. And then it allows the beautiful high end string. not sound all sour. I like that quite a bit. Now when we think about that as far as what the guitar can do, those are some really great problems that are solved right off the bat. Let's talk about something else with this real quick. I want to bring you over here to the actual pickup itself, the preamp. We're going to look at it like here. It's like bam, we got a guitar gun. But no, it's, it's right here. The reason that's important is that people are usually only used to seeing this as the pickup system for Taylor's ES2, the ESB is similar, but in a different place and not knobs. Usually it has a tuner, or it always has a tuner, or at least usually it has a tuner. But let's talk about that in comparison. There's quite a bit of electronics underneath those knobs. Check that out. And the reason that that's important is because this, this whole ES2 pickup system is more than a decade old, and Taylor is continuously upgrading it. They're continuously upgrading the electronics and the circuitry in there. So an ES2 today might be on its like eighth generation, eighth revision, uh, compared to something from five years ago that might be on its, you know, sixth revision or, or whatever it is. Now Taylor doesn't publish a revision history that I'm aware of. They prefer for you to think of the ES2 across their entire line as the same system, but the reality is they're continuously improving that, just like with the V-class and C-class bracing, the relief routes and scallop, and all the stuff that they do, they're constantly working with their electronics as well. So let's actually go over that for a second for those that don't know. We've got our volume right here. This is pretty simple. Uh, straight down, the 12 o'clock facing downwards position is, uh, is the standard spot. Of course, you've got right and left. Now, these two are here. You've got your low and your mid, or your low and your highs. When they're both pointed straight down, you've got a flat EQ. The guitar is actually based around a mid-range presence. So if you want to boost the mids, you would pull down your treble and your bass. If you want to reduce the mids, you could push up your treble and your bass. If you wanted to give you some, bring off some brashness, but thicken it up some. If you wanted to thin it out, make it brittle or something really set for a very delicate finger picking piece, specifically on the treble strings, you would change those around. All those things work just like you would expect them to. And they have different sounds. We're gonna go ahead and hear those sounds right now. All right, flat EQ. Now we're going to do mid-range boosted. Now we're going to do mid-range reduced. Now we're going to do just some regular thickening. And now we're going to do where I prefer most of the time. I prefer an inverted six or seven position right there. There you have it. I hope you were able to hear those. Headphones would be helpful, but I definitely can hear them, especially when plugged in and stuff like that. It sounds great. Let's actually talk about the next part, which are uh, gripes. We talked about how to adjust it with the Allen key. Lefty, loosey, righty, tighty, small adjustments are your friend here. Gripes. Um, people don't know enough about the system, right? Taylor doesn't really talk about the brand new system. They just had a new ESB system come out, big headlines on that. That's on their more entry level guitars, but their professional system, they really like to just keep it as part of the system. They don't talk about the updates and the things that is actually happening with it behind the scenes so that across the generations of owners, you just have the ES2 pickup, it's just the ES2. 
But really, there's a lot of stuff going on with it. And because there's a lack of awareness, I mean, like, when's the last video you saw on the ES2 pickup system? Hundreds of videos on the LR Bags Anthem, K Pure Mini, all that stuff. But when's the last time the, the Sonicore, Fender Sonicore, when's, uh, when's the last time you heard about this? Nobody really talks about it. And uh, because they don't talk about it, the next gripe that I have is they don't realize they can adjust it. So many people, especially new to Taylor, and this is me included, uh, when I got the, this guitar, I was really expecting that pickup to sound great. But out of the box, for my style of playing, it was not set up. The factory set up for the pickup. The tension across the entire saddle for the pickup was making it um, much, it was really tight, which meant that it was really strong, which meant it was very sensitive. And I heard every little thing. I didn't like it at all. And I had to do some research. I had to actually download the manual from Taylor because you don't get any manuals in this day and age anymore. I had to download the ES2 pickup manual and find out, oh man, this system is made to be adjusted. The screws, like I even asked the guitar guy at uh, Guitar Center, like, what's the deal with the screws? And he's like, oh, it's for adjustment for the pickup. I'm like, why would you adjust the undersaddle pickup? He says, I don't know, man, it's just what they do. And maybe he should have said something else. Maybe he should have had a better answer. Maybe he should have educated me. But as a customer, I had to educate myself. And that was a process. Because the information wasn't available, I had to search for it. So here you go. Uh, once I got it adjusted, I loved it. I mean, I, I really do like the ability to adjust the individual parts. There's no expandability for the system other than Taylor Sense, which is a plug and play option, which will give you the ability to monitor humidity and drops and geo whatever, your guitar and stuff like that. Uh, it doesn't do any firmware updates. So with a system like this that Taylor's got that they're constantly updating, it would be nice if there would be a way for older Taylor owners to have an ES2 to be able to at least update firmware that could be updated if the if it, I don't know that, that there is but there's no way to do that so that kind of sucks and and also there's a lot of modeling that's coming out with uh, active pickups nowadays in the guitar now I actually love how this Taylor sounds but it would be nice if they had an ES2 system that also had the ability to add some chorus or some reverb or some delay to your output give you a little bit I mean it's it's in here they've got modeling on other ones Taylor is such a progressive company when it comes to forward thinking. I'm sure they're probably aware of this and thinking of something that's going to work right the Taylor way. And Taylor reminds me a lot of Apple when it comes to guitars. They've got many different ways they want to get it right and, and, and um, they want to be perfect about how they do it. Um, I don't use Apple phones, but I do love Taylor guitars. I absolutely do. So I've had a great time sharing this with you guys. If you want to know anything else, go ahead and join us over in the conversation over on chriswestentertainment.com. Click on the fretboard forum link and you'll be able to interact with myself and some others. It's a pretty small group right now, but it's growing every day. Would love to have you over there and creating content with me just by posts and pictures and videos that you upload, stuff like that. That's criswestentertainment.com. If you did like this video and find it helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below. That truly does help share this video out to all the interwebs, reddits, wherever you put your cool stuff that you like, especially if it's a geeky, nerdy kind of video where we're talking about an ES2 pickup. And finally, I want to say thank you and remind you to use those Amazon links down below if you want to support the channel. You don't need to send any money. You can buy me a cup of coffee if you want, but the easiest way to support what I'm doing here is simply to shop using the Amazon links provided down below. Even if you're getting dishwasher detergent and you get it on Amazon, clicking on any of the links before you buy your dishwasher detergent will send a couple of pennies my way. I'd appreciate it. Guys, Chris West Entertainment is the live sound event and audio division of Robert Ham Photography. We have a whole group of people that do all of this stuff. We do it for weddings, mainly in venues out on location from time to time. And I'm looking forward to 2023, bringing more of this to you with an entire series, an out, get out and gig series specific to guitar, specific to playing, you know, the, basically your, your 80s and 90s types of band hits uh, out at your local bar, brew, pub, or street corner, but not the walking kind, you know what I'm talking about. Guys, I want to thank you for watching. Once again, it means a lot to me. Please sound off in the comments below. I'd love to interact with you. Catch you guys on the flip side. Bye for now.